for our second session, which is all about, it's a show and tell really about one of the projects that was part of the intent report that Rob was one of the authors of. And uh, that was uh, a project called um, the Clavier Project. Um, it was a research project, but it was involving telecollaboration uh, in French between Warwick and the University of Clermont-Ferrand in France. Uh, so uh, Simon is here with us, and uh, Simon is going to uh, give us some information about how this affected uh, teachers and students, how it impacted um, on that side of the channel, and I will first give you um, a bit of a, uh, hello, somebody's messing around with my board, let me just come back and come, thank you. <laughs> okay. Moderators, can you please stop clicking things? <laughs> okay, let's just come back to the slides. Okay, so I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about this project and give you a bit of background uh, to the project. Then I'm going to invite Simon to join us. And uh, let's just... Sorry, I'm just going to make sure that Simon's got a mic so he can interject and add things as he wishes to. Um, throughout the Hello, can you hear me? presentation. Hi, we can hear you. Thanks very much. That's great. Good to okay, know you. Okay, great. So let's just give you a little bit of context, uh, first of all. Um, three years ago, uh, in, a, in a, um, a series of comments uh, on a blog, a blog by Steve Wheeler, or Tim Buckteeth, as he's known on Twitter, um, I was involved in a, in, a, in a critical incident, I think, Rob, you'd have to defi define it as, um, where uh, some reaction um, to a post that Steve had, had put up um, drew some rather critical and I thought very unfair um, response from the outside world, which is, of course, always the danger of blogging things publicly. Um, anybody can get involved in the discussion. And as a result of uh, a series of sort of messages that went backwards and forwards, I bumped into, virtually, um, Simon Enser. And as we got chatting, we decided that actually wouldn't it be quite a good idea to make some sort of virtual exchange for his learners of English and my learners of French. And we looked at some of the things that we were doing at the time, one of which was developing uh, an online platform here at Warwick for language teaching. Uh, we call it Languages at Warwick. It's a Moodle-based platform. But it's a Moodle-based platform which, at, the, at its very heart, um, has the uh, idea, really, that it's, it's important to have a variety of different spaces in order to get people to, um, uh, to communicate and enjoy and learn together. Um, so it's not all about the lecture space, as you can see perhaps on here. Let's just use my pointers. It's not all about this sort of environment. We also want environments that are perhaps a little bit more like this, quiet spaces where people can go and reflect and think uh, and enjoy uh, the intellectual challenges that they're grappling with at university. Um, small social spaces where people can talk and chat. Um, spaces where people can work alongside each other and collaborate. So I was in the process of building that platform and that platform, as I say, was based on Moodle but also had to have some very important tools in there because voice is, as we realized and we talked about at Quill yesterday, very important for the whole um, online experience and, and connection, for connecting people. Hearing their voice is actually quite crucial. Seeing them seeing their picture, the profile, and hearing their voice helps to shorten the, the psychological distance that we experience when we are at a physical distance. Um, so I was in the process of doing that, so I decided, and, and as um, Simon is a bit of a risk taker like me, that why didn't we create a course within that Moodle environment and start experimenting on it. So we did, and two years ago, we launched the EWC course, the uh, Echange Clermont, uh, Warwick Clermont course. 
and we invited our students to think about how they wanted to present themselves online, which, as you can see from the variety of the pictures that we've got on here, they did um, very successfully and they managed to engage each other in discussion and collaboration and we set about the process of building some tasks some of which started in uh, in class and extended beyond the classroom it was very important from our perspective that we linked up the formal and the informal opportunities for, for learning so we used a variety of, um, of tools here are some of them at the time um, Simon was using Google Docs, I think they still are using Google Docs uh, quite extensively for collaboration. We'll be experiencing and using them later on today as well. Uh, we encourage students, if they wanted to, to continue the conversations having found partners to interact with um, out in Facebook or Last.fm according to their interests. We applied hashtags, you'll be unsurprised to know. Um, so we used the hashtag Walklair for uh, messages between the groups in, in English and the hashtag Claire War for messages between the groups in uh, French so we were then able to pull streams back into the portal to show people um, we actually wanted to capitalize on the networks that the students were using already uh, not purely to give them tools. We did give them tools and we gave them plenty of institutional tools um, including an instant messaging tool. Um, however, if they already had their own networks, their own places to interact, uh, we openly and actively encouraged them to use those and then um, try to bring what we were finding out from those back into the learning. Uh, we also I invited a group of students from Clermont-Ferrand to design a logo for the project, which they did very effectively. A uh, very nice logo it is too. Uh, these were highlights from a questionnaire that Simon put together in, I think, the first year of, of, the, um, of the run of uh, the virtual exchange. As is a very open virtual exchange, so we set up a, um, a virtual exchange that is essentially a a course that runs throughout the course, the call of the year, course of the year, and there are class tasks, and that course is zoned uh, to show various things that uh, are happening across the across the year. Um, a lot of the interaction is asynchronous. Uh, we're moving into our third year now, so Simon, uh, Simon has recently hosted a visit from myself and our senior tutor in French over in Clermont, and we've put together our plans to uh, increase the nature of the tasks in terms of having some inter interaction that is, async that is synchronous. Our tutors use, um, use synchronous tools increasingly now and are getting a bit more comfortable with our Collaborate Online environment. So this coming year takes us even further, but what we've learned so far and the tasks that we've created um, are available for download as PDFs via the Uni Collaboration um, website. So you can go there, you can see what we've learned and how we've done things and you can learn from that. So I think that's important that people know that you don't have to start from scratch. There's a lot of thinking and time and planning that you have to put into all of these things. Um, and the one thing that uh, uni collaboration really can offer us is a leg up on that uh, so that you can start uh, to apply things that may or may not work and then you can feed those back into the platform and the community and we can start to analyze exactly why they did or didn't work. So I think what we found out really over the, over the from my perspective, um, from the Warwick side, over the period of the use of EWC for a virtual exchange, uh, and this is an exchange that has reached 700 students a year, so it's a, it's a very big, big um, exchange, is that we've got um, a set here of, will somebody stop taking snapshots, thank you, <laughs> we've got a set here of, of tools that provide something that meets quite nicely with Kearney's research. Um, I, I mentioned this research yesterday, you'll find it in the ALT published open access um, uh, journal research in teaching. Um, and it, it looks at the types of environments uh, that best facilitate uh, engagement. 
And I think what we found in the EWC course was that we got an, a good use of time and space online. We have got a good uh, combination of authenticity, uh, collaboration, and personalization. I'm not saying any of these things are perfect. I'm saying that we, we've got a good basis for a strong model uh, that could be applied to other languages. And indeed, in the next, in the coming year, we are applying this uh, to other languages. So, uh, yeah, we're uh, we're looking forward to the rollout of this in in other languages as well as a as a model um, for collaboration. So, Simon, I've talked enough. Over to you. Tell us how you found the whole thing. But I must also say a quick hello to Sarah Guth, who I see has just joined us from New York at a ridiculous hour in the morning. Thank you very much, Sarah. Feel free to use the text chat. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks very much for joining us. And Simon, over to you to tell us more about the impact of the EWC exchange on your staff and students. Uh, Teresa, I'm just wondering, I, I uh, tweeted you a link to a picture. I don't know if Great, it's possible okay. to show that. Absolutely, yeah. Let's pick that up. Okay. Sure. Right. Have you sent that on a DM or, or let's have a look. Um, I've sent it via the, t the uh, chat. Oh, okay. I've right, also okay. tweeted it. Yeah. Okay. So, let's, so if it's back in the chat, let's come back a bit. It's uh, your direct chat. Oh, in a in a in a a secret chat. A, di a, D a DM. Yeah. Stat student links is that the one? No. No. No, I don't see discussion on it's in the uh okay. I'm just I sorry. don't see it at the moment in the DM. Well, let me uh, it and just put hashtag quill on it and I should be able to pick it up from there. Um, I'll put it straight into the text chat if you like. And that will send it okay. out. If you if you put the link straight into the text chat. And then it's available for everybody. Great, thank you very much. Yeah. Right, okay. So I'm going to let's just do that through a web tour so we can show it to everybody. There we go. You've been busy with your um, infographic tools again. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, love it. Tell us more about it. Right. Okay, well, the truth is, um, I'm in the middle of moving house. And uh, so, Teresa asked me to speak about the impact of this on this end. So, I thought, well, we better have a picture because otherwise it'll be quite difficult to follow. Um, I'd like to center on the little picture in the middle, which is a picture of uh, an iris. And this is a picture which you also saw on Teresa's presentation. And I'd like to talk just a bit about that. Um, the original conversations that we had together were about how to open up activity for the students and for the teachers into different spaces in which they were comfortable. And also to allow them to have private conversations which were not for, for teachers to see. And also to, inside the institution, to follow lines of possible support from other institutional bodies. And I'd like to talk you through this diagram. So if we look at the top, the first one, obviously, is international relations. Right from the start, it was clear at an institutional level that it was of great interest to have 700 students online between the UK and France for the people in international relations. They could see instantly an interest to perhaps combine physical mobility with virtual mobility. And that's something which is not ongoing. And we were able fairly soon to get financial support from them to actually reinforce our partnership with Warwick. So that's the first thing. The second thing is teachers. Well, the first year we were two in Clermont, and gradually that again is expanding. Because right from the start, we didn't see it as something which was 
classroom based or one teacher it was something which was going to grow we hoped like a like an iris rhizomatically and pop up in different forms according to the teachers skills the teachers particular objectives inside their classrooms and that's something which we've seen pretty clearly that teachers don't always have the same skill set that Rob was talking about at the beginning however they can absolutely participate in, in, in a telecollaboration project at their level if the project from the start is enabled with that flexibility another line is research well right from the start this was something new to us and it was clear that we needed to ground ourselves in, in, in a research action approach and so right from the start we made links with the local research laboratory and they've helped us enormously and helped us to also integrate the Euracol community which again was very important for the development of our project in Clermont-Ferrand as Rob said we can't just see it as something which is bolted on uh, we have had discussions this year about assessment uh, this project is something which is having an effect right across the board uh, in Clermont-Ferrand we have something like 5,000 students who are studying in English because it's, it's something which is compulsory for them so if you have one group of students at a degree level who are following telecollaboration that has a knock-on effect to students who may not be involved directly but might be in the future curriculum again uh, we've been seeing how this can enrich our curriculum but at the time that's of enriching it it's also changing it new learning spaces right from the start Theresa showed you some photographs of new learning spaces well this is actually having an effect on the space in which we're teaching uh, if we had started two years ago with a traditional classroom it wouldn't have been possible to do the sort of activities that we're doing now which is uh, something which we were conscious of from the start it's having an effect on the architecture the students again what's very interesting is that in the past we had students that we wouldn't notice perhaps in the classroom they were very quiet very discreet very conscientious perhaps but we didn't see them actually come alive as we have seen during this two years I'd like to tell you uh, uh, one story which I think illustrates that at the beginning of the year um, I met a student who was an ex soldier in the French army he had a great difficulty in actually speaking in French to somebody in front of the other people in the class well this student got in contact with somebody completely different from himself in Warwick and built a relationship which is still ongoing which is quite extraordinary and he was able to learn at his own rhythm with his own partner outside the classroom and that has a, had an enormous effect on his motivation on his linguistic skills and his intercultural skills and suddenly we're noticing him in a completely different way so it's had an effect on engagement autonomy and also the students have extended their networks enormously at the beginning of last year we had a student who immediately went and made friends with about 40 of the girls in Warwick and I spoke to him at the beginning of the year I said how's it going with your network and he said well I'm probably meeting one girl she's going to be in uh, the Côte d'Azur another one in Paris so it's having an extraordinary effect on not just their learning but also on their social social connections and the final thing I'd like to say is in terms of this openness of the project well we have also now a, another partner in Poland and they are able to uh, communicate via our public spaces they're not involved in the Moodle but they can quite easily get involved in the blogs on Twitter and I think that that's something which is for the future uh, a, a way that we're going to extend these sort of activities so really what we're talking about is less classroom to classroom and more networks which will link together extend perhaps for over a short period 
others over a long period and I think that's really where we're at so I think I'd like to come back to this picture with the irises what we, what we really are interested in is not the flower vase with a cut flower what we're interested in is something a bit more organic and perhaps a, a lot more unpredict unpredictable so who knows where we're going to go in the next couple of years but that's where we're at at the moment Thanks very much, Simon. And it was really exciting, actually, to be over in Clermont, um, uh, talking to colleagues over there and seeing how much they have enjoyed uh, watching and uh, sort of lurking, if you like, in in, in our environment this past year, um, and are now um, convinced that in fact they can do things by tweaking uh, some ideas to fit their their uh, model of uh, of teaching delivery, um, pulling them into this sort of activity um, and I think it's really exciting to discover new potentials, new ideas as well. Um, there are a couple of questions, um, one actually refers back to the um, model that you just showed us uh, or the sort of infographic you just showed us really um, and whether there was any relation between the size of the boxes on that picture to, um, to the importance of those elements. Um, I'm not sure that's if you would question. answer that question. I'm not. That's a that's a very good that's a very good question. I'd be very interested to know what what <laughs> the person who asked it actually thought, because there wasn't any uh, how can I put it graphic uh, decision about the size of the boxes. It just happened that way. Right. Okay. I I kind of suspected that. So that's that's fine. It's not like a sort of you know a, an auto-generated word cloud or whatever that would emphasize the size. No, no, no. Right. No, no. And the other question is perhaps a question that maybe we will address through some downloads, and that is rhizomatic learning. What does it mean? Um, and I'm going to point you to the ALT, the Association of Learning Technologists, because they're the people who, uh, where you will really find uh, lots and lots of research on this. But also, um, in the, maybe if you join that Google Plus community, we'll put some further links in there uh, about rhizomatic learning. I'm hoping that you're going to experience that today, because that's really the point of doing this online, through um, tweeting, through joining the Google Plus community, through in, uh, interacting with each other in this environment as well, you will create uh, what is sometimes referred to as a personal learning network, maybe a personal learning environment yourself, and you'll experience rhizomatic learning. Yeah, it's all about your roots of learning going down and popping up elsewhere and learning, uh, learning more. So I hope you're going to experience that.